Hey guys, welcome back to ADV for the King. Today we're going to talk about mods on the XT250. Now let's get right into it. Let's start with lighting. The first mod we're going to talk about is the headlight and I actually have the Tusk H4 LED bulb in here. I'll have a link in the description for all of these mods, except for one. Here is what the Tusk H4 bulb looks like. It's a direct replacement in your stock headlight and it just plugs right in. This is the best solution that I've found. It's very bright, although it doesn't tell us how bright it is. Now I've tried a couple of different headlights on this, some like hardly round uh, self-enclosed headlights and uh, I didn't like any of them, the low beams you almost couldn't see anything on, and uh, it just didn't work well. With this Tusk H4 bulb, it works amazing. It's very bright on low and high, it just gets a little bit brighter. It's the best headlight setup that I've ever used on this motorcycle. The next light mod that I've installed is pretty awesome. It's these lights here with the, that are attached to my hand guards here, and I have it screwed directly into the hand guard with a bolt. Um, I will not have a link for these because they are from Harbor Freight, and they're actually for Jeeps. It came with a wiring harness, and I just wired it right to the battery, and I drilled a hole in the plastic although many of you might not like that and I've got mixed feelings about it too. So the switch is just directly in my plastics on the right side here and it works. It's a little bit redneck though. Now these things are super bright. They draw like 50 watts. I believe the headlight draws around 50 watts too. So make sure that your bike is one of the newer models that has a bigger stator on it and know how much voltage is going out of your bike at all times so you don't overload the stator. However, these lights are very handy for off-road. I definitely use them all the time. Now next, of course, with all of these heavy draw lights here on this motorcycle, you gotta find places where you can reduce the wattage draw. So one place you can save a lot of watts really fast is your tail light, actually. I just ordered like a $7 replacement bulb for the tail light, plugged it in, plug and play was super easy, and it only draws like one or two watts. It's pretty nice. And of course, blinkers. Now this was pretty complicated to install. I actually ordered a lighting kit from 83 Motorsports. I will leave a link to his channel below. It provides a little bit of tutorials on it and you can order the lighting kit from him. Um, you could also just order the blinkers from Amazon, which I will have a link for as well. And those work pretty good, but you won't get the wiring harness with it or the instructions. It's definitely helpful to have those and also to support a small business. But I've been very happy with these blinkers. Uh, they look really cool. They have some cool animations on them when they blink. They're probably only $20 on Amazon. Um, like I said, though, the lighting kit will be more expensive if you choose to go that route. I chose to go that route and I don't regret it at all. Now that's it for lighting. Let's talk about racks. Now, if you know anything about racks for the XT250, you've probably heard of the Precision Motorcycle Racks, or PMR. I have been using this rack system since I owned it. I started with just the tail rack, and I eventually got the side racks here on the side that offer a little bit of extra protection and handhelds and places to strap motorcycle luggage to. And overall, I've been very happy with it. Um, I did have one small thing where the rack actually cracked in half, um, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, for one, I load way too much motorcycle luggage on my bike, probably 70 pounds. I haven't weighed it exactly. I'll probably do that in another video, but I have a lot of weight on my rear rack. Also, when it broke, I had a mod screwed into the rear rack. It's kind of like a homemade L bracket, and it held my fuel can that I used to use on the back that I no longer use. Honestly, the XT has more than enough gas to get you most places and I've never actually needed an extra fuel bottle. The way the L bracket was mounted, it stuck out the end. It really added a lot of extra stress to the rack and I think that's what broke it. So I did take that off and it's been fine. The rack still works. I am probably going to replace it soon though. Overall, it's been a great rack system. Got links down below if you want to take a look at those. You won't regret it, if, especially if you using soft luggage and you're not doing panniers. Um, if I were to do it again, I probably would go the pannier route. It would have just given me more storage space. Now you're probably thinking, man, that seat does not look like a stock seat for the X-T250. And you would be correct because it is definitely not the stock seat. I ordered from Seat Concepts this foam and cover kit. I got the tall comfort version. That adds about an 
inch of seat height to the motorcycle, which for me, being 5'11", I'm a little bit taller. I got a longer legs, longer inseam. It's about a 33 inch inseam. So I needed the extra height on the X-T250 and that works well for me. If you're a taller guy and you own the X-T250, you definitely might want to look into that. The seat honestly is about the same comfort level as the stock seat. If you're a little shorter or you like the stock seat, stick with it. It's probably just as comfortable as a seat comfort seat. The only advantage to the seat comfort seat is that it's a little bit wider, which some people might interpret that as more comfortable. For me, it doesn't matter either way with my tiny butt. <laughs> but, uh, it is a wider seat, gives you a little bit more room to sit on. That could be useful for a lot of people. I don't regret buying it. It's definitely been a great seat. Now, another mod that I did for being a little bit taller, also carrying a whole lot of heavy luggage, I installed a rear spring to this XT250. The spring is the heavy duty spring from EPN Performance, and it definitely stiffens up the bike quite a bit. It takes out a significant amount of the sag, but with how heavy I load my bike down, it's definitely welcome. When I have all my gear on and then I sit on it, it does sag a few inches. When I don't have any gear on it, it almost doesn't sag at all. It does make it very nice if you're gonna do some rougher stuff. It, it really keeps the bike in line a little bit better, gives you a little bit more control. Now, before you ask, I did not install any suspension upgrades to the front forks. I would like to do that because the front end's definitely a little squishy, but I don't bottom them out super often. A lot of my weight ends up being over the rear wheel. What I'd have has worked fine this year. I'm sure if I got the nicer uh, front end fork oil and fork springs that you can get for this, I probably would never say that again, but because I haven't experienced it, I have no idea what I'm missing, and that's good for now. <laughs> also, quick side note, sorry the bike's a little muddy. I think that if your XT250 isn't muddy, you're probably not riding it and getting the most out of your motorcycle. So not to say you can't only ride it on the street, but this is definitely a dirt orientated motorcycle, and it's a lot of fun for that. Let's talk about the skid plate. Now, I don't have the normal skid plate that most people get for this motorcycle. Um, I actually picked up a Hunter Bike XT250 skid plate. I've got the link in the description below. Fairly solid skid plate. I'd say it's not as solid as some of the other options out there, um, but it does a good job. It's protected me from several rocks, and honestly, it's served me pretty well. I really only bought it because it was black, and I like the color a little bit better than the raw aluminum one. Um, one thing to note when you put a skid plate like this on the motorcycle is you will hear more of your engine noise. Um, it kind of reflects the sound back at you that you wouldn't normally hear, and it takes a little bit to get used to. One thing that I did was I actually did paint a sound absorbing paint on the bottom, although I probably wouldn't recommend doing that because it actually, that paint ended up back all over my engine and it, it's taken forever to sort of come off. And I also put some foam uh, on the bottom of the skid plate in between the, the bike and the skid plate, which did help absorb some of that noise. You definitely wanna have a skid plate though to protect your motorcycle. It's solid investment. I would not, that's one of the first things that I would do on a motorcycle is to get that skid plate. Now, I also have foot pegs installed on this bike. The stock ones are a little bit thin. Uh, they're nice, but uh, if you want a little bit more control and a little bit more room on your foot, I would definitely suggest upgrading those. I just bought some cheap ones off Amazon. I'll have a link in the description for those. You can get, They come in multiple colors. You can do red, green, or blue. I went with blue at first, and then I changed it to red with the beginning of last year because I kind of wanted some red accents on the bike. I thought it looked really cool. They're much wider. They've got a lot more grip on them, and I've been pretty happy with them. They've held up pretty well. When I had the blue ones, I did wreck this bike quite a bit, and I did wreck, uh, destroy the foot peg on one of them. They are aluminum, um, but I haven't had any issues with these red ones. They work pretty well. Next on the list is these MZS levers. They also come in multiple colors. I got the red on here. They work pretty well. I would put some Loctite up on this lot here to, to keep it from falling off because I have had those screws fall out before, but they are much better, a huge upgrade to the original levers on there. They give you much more control over the hole and they're not as clunky and hard to deal with. You can use like two fingers to pull in the clutch or the front brake. They are fantastic. Anytime I get a bike in the future, that's one of the first things that I'm going to upgrade. Now I have these mirrors on this motorcycle and these are like 
double take mirror knockoffs. I will throw the throw a link for them in the description, but I really don't recommend them. If you're gonna get mirrors like this, get the original double take mirrors. Those are much better, much higher quality, and they're not gonna vibrate as much. These mirrors vibrate a lot, and it's really hard to see at high speeds. It'll be one thing that I definitely will change on this bike is upgrading to real double take mirrors. Even so, these mirrors are still better than the stock setup. They're bigger and they fold out of the way when you crash. I've done many times, definitely saved my mirrors quite a bit. I have different grips on this. I have the Pro Taper grips on my Pro Taper handlebar. Both the links for those will be in the description, I believe. The grips are pretty generic. They're just basic motorcycle grips. And then I have a special handlebar on this motorcycle. It is the KTM stock Pro Taper bar. It does not have a cross piece in it, which I really like. It's a little bit thicker in the, in the middle. It's a very thick aluminum bar. Wonderful bar. It improves the look of your motorcycle the handling of the motorcycle. Definitely recommend new handlebars on it. And the reason I got them partially was to use these Highway Dirt Bike handguards. These are fantastic handguards. I personally think they are the best handguards that are in existence. The only drawback to these handguards is that you have to have aftermarket handlebars for them to work because they actually are screwed directly into the metal on the handguard you actually have to tap out this, this bar in the middle, so you need aluminum aftermarket handlebars for this to work. But if you can make them work, I do have a link in the description for them. They are a fantastic uh, little company in Colorado. They make the best handguards out there. One cool thing about these handguards is that there is a pair of mirrors that you can get for these that fold out of the handguards, which are really nice. I do not have them on this because I just haven't got around to purchasing them. They're fairly expensive, just like the handguards, which are also fairly expensive. But if you want the most protective handguards you can get, get these. I would not be scared to actually put it like a, a crane hook on this and lift the whole bike by these handguards. They're that good. That whole setup has that. I have uh, some Pro Taper adapters that adapt the handlebar size from the uh, original steel bar that was in there, which is much thinner than the center part of this handlebar. So you'll need that to put these kind of handlebars on them. I definitely recommend these handlebars. These are great handlebars. On the handlebars, I've got this quad lock phone mount. Um, you can really use any phone mount, um, but quad lock has been a pretty good one. It doesn't stick out as much. It doesn't take as much space up on the handlebars, and it's always held my phone in pretty well. One thing that I like about this is I have the optional vibration dampener on it, which is extremely useful. I have had a phone ruined by a cheap phone holder. If, it, if your phone holder does not have a vibration dampener and you're going to leave your phone in there, ruin the camera on it. On my first moto camping trip, you can see here in this footage, how grainy it is. That's from the vibrations going through the handlebars and going into the phone, ruining the vibration control in the camera. And I had to get a new camera because of that. Next thing I did was go out and buy this quad lock phone holder. And I've never had an issue with it since the vibrations are non-existent on that thing. It works really well. Another thing on the handlebars, I have a basic USB charger. This one is a very cheap charger. I would probably get something a little bit better than this if I were to do it again. Maybe see if you can find someone to, to 3D print a little switch cluster mount where you can put like a regular circular charger in there. Probably be better than what I have, but what I have is very easy to install. It, it comes with a clip that attaches right to the handlebars and then you just wire it directly to your battery. It has a kind of voltmeter in there so you can see what your system's running at, which is very useful to see if you can even start your bike or why it's not starting or how much electricity is being drawn with all of your fancy lights that you're gonna put on your bike. Now, of course, let's talk about tires. Now, I have the Tusk Dual Sport adventure tires on this motorcycle. I have mixed feelings about them. The, the performance in the dirt is amazing. I would say that I probably don't like the front tire if you're gonna be going above 55 on the road. It makes it extremely unstable above that speed. I'd say that above 60, I don't feel safe going with that front tire. I will probably change it out to something else. But if you're going below that speed, highly recommend these tires. They, they give you amazing grip in the dirt. Really enjoy them. They make your bike look Look a little bit more aggressive and meaty too. There is one thing that you have to do though if you want to install this. I totally made this myself out of a, so a door hinge I think is what I made it out of and I drilled some holes in it and cut it to shape. There's a little fender on the back side of the motorcycle and I wanted to keep that 
So what I did is, hey, I made this little mod out of out of the out of the door hinge and basically raised that fender up about an inch, maybe. That tire will not fit on this bike without raising that up. So that's something to note if you do go with a Tusk Dual Sport. The advantage of those tires is that they're cheaper and they'll last you a long time on the bike. So that's definitely something worth noting. Now, as far as mods I haven't done or would like to do on the bike, um, I wouldn't be opposed to getting a new muffler, but I'm not in a huge rush. I do kind of like the quieter sound of the muffler that's on it. Um, I wouldn't mind getting a muffler that would increase the performance a little bit, but I'm definitely not going to go out of my way to get that. Honestly, this bike, if you're wanting to get extra performance out of it, um, it's probably not the bike that, that you should be getting. <laughs> the reality is, is that uh, it's got what it's got. An extra few percentages of power is not going to help you all that much on this motorcycle. It is a very capable motorcycle, but I don't necessarily think it's worth it to spend $300, $400 on a, on a new muffler. And I definitely want to do the front springs and fork oil upgrade on this motorcycle. Not sure if I want to do it myself, I'd probably would take that to someone who actually knows how to do it. Definitely seems like a complicated job and I'm not really a mechanic. And of course I wouldn't mind changing the front tire to something a little bit more street orientated for more stability on the highway. I would also be interested in putting pannier racks and a, and a different rack on this bike. Although I do like these precision motorcycle racks and they've done pretty good. Well guys, that's all I got for mods on the XT250. If you have any suggestions or things you like better than some of the mods I got on there, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Don't take my recommendations as gospel because the reality is you gotta suit your bike up and make it your own. Now all of these mods, at least all the mods that I can, will have Amazon links in the description below or a link directly to the person's website. I will receive a small kickback from the links to Amazon, so make sure to go through those links if you want to buy any of this stuff. It would help me out a little bit and at no extra cost to you. If you're interested in seeing some of my luggage setup for moto camping, check out this video.